Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me for This Week in the Clinic, episode number 21. As you can see, I'm actually not in the clinic. I'm actually currently on paternity leave right now. Um, so I'm at home and I wanted to take this opportunity at home to share what's actually in my home, what's in my supplement cupboard. I get a lot of questions all the time. What do you take? You know, what, what's your daily supplement regimen? Uh, what do you do for emergencies? What do you do when you're traveling? I mean, there's so many different um, uses for supplements. So I get questions all the time. I wanted to share with you just what's in my cupboard. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to cover a lot of ground. We're going to talk all about supplements. So uh, if you are joining me live, uh, I just want you to know that we, uh, I will be taking your, your questions as well as we go along here. So um, I've got my screen here on Facebook and um, just loading her up so I can tend to your questions and we'll, we'll have a nice discussion here. So give me a thumbs up, a heart if, if you've joined me and, and if you're looking forward to what we're going to cover today. So if you've never joined me though, my name is Josh Catalis. I'm a clinical nutritionist and functional medicine practitioner. Uh, and I run and operate a clinic in Toronto, Ontario, and I work with people in person in our clinic and also worldwide. And I run a program called the Functional Nutrition Certification Program, which actually begins in September in about one and a half months. So if you're interested in that, you should go check it out at functionalnutrition.ca. Um, and we also, the, the first course in our full program is the Therapy Nutrition and supplements in practice course, which is just like the kitchen sink of supplements. Uh, but we're going to talk all about supplements here today and uh, hopefully be a little bit, bit of a foundation as to, well, a little knowledge onto just some basic supplement uh, choices. So before I get into this, I just want to preempt by saying um, I literally just kind of pulled everything out of my supplement cupboard. and. Um, I've got various brands, I've got various forms of, of things, and some things, you know, I've been given samples, some things I'm trying, uh, some things I've been taking for a long time. Um, so this isn't necessarily my regimen all the time, it's always changing depending on my body needs, depending on what I feel uh, I need at that time, as we will talk about. And it's just changing based on uh, learning different things about supplements. I'm always trying to upgrade my information and I'm always trying to learn more about what's out there. So I see um, we have someone joining us from Ottawa. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us, uh, Francine. So first, I, I kind of, after I pulled them out, I kind of divvied them up into a few just basic categories. So I've got... Uh, sort of the foundational supplements, which I take almost on a daily basis. I've got a selection of items that I use recreationally. So I use them here or there depending on, you know, what I feel my body's needs are, what a type of activity I'm taking part in that day or what I need them for. And then I've got uh, a category of more of the emergency type of supplements, you know, supplements that I might only use once in a while um, in certain situations. So let's get right into it. First, I want to start with sort of my daily regimen. And uh, the first thing that I, that I start with is just a basic multivitamin. Now, I'm sure I'll probably get a lot of questions about brands and what I think is the best ones. Um, and that's actually a much, much longer discussion, which I cover thoroughly in my Therapeutic Nutrition and Supplements in Practice course, which starts in September. But um, my multivitamin, I, you know, I go through many different ones. So I just finished one that I formulated for myself based on my own blood work. But this one's from Nature Farm. Uh, they sent me a sample with our recent order, so I thought I'd try it out. And what I look for in a multivitamin is uh, good dosages of each one of the vitamins and the right forms of all the nutrients. So what a lot of people don't know is that there's many different forms of vitamins, of minerals, and some are more usable by the body than others. Some are more absorbable by the body than others. And I'll give you an example. Um, the writing on this label is ridiculously small. So I'm just trying to um, focus in here to see. 
if I can actually read it. So I'll give you one example. So they've got um, a vitamin A in here called riboflavin 5-phosphate. Um, and that is the phosphorylated form of riboflavin, which is vitamin B2. And it's much more usable to the body than vitamin B2 on its own. So just by looking at some of the ingredients, you can tell the quality of a supplement and you want something that is most usable by the body. Uh, so that when you take those nutrients, your body's gonna use it well. Okay, so I always like to start with the multivitamin. We know that minerals and vitamins have been declining in the soil over the past 100 years. I just looked at another study today showing that there is a substantial decline. One of the most uh, greatly declined nutrients is magnesium. And there's, it, it's one of the biggest deficiencies in North America. And it's associated with many different enzymatic reactions in the body, super important. So, sorry, something just popped up on my screen here. I gotta just close her down. So yeah, so magnesium, uh, so a multivitamin is known as what I call an insurance policy. It sort of covers all your bases and all the vitamins and minerals, and it's a good way to make sure that you have all of those. Now, anyone studying nutrition knows that as you start to research and learn about each nutrient, you start to think, oh, I need that one. Oh, I need that one. Oh, that one's important. And what you realize is that obviously you need all of them and they work synergistically. So a good multivitamin, a high quality, um, well-absorbed, good form multivitamin is a great place to start. The next thing um, I like to use basically on a daily basis is a probiotic. So this is actually uh, one of the probiotics that um, we use in the clinic quite a bit. Uh, it's one of our formulations and uh, we call it probiotic complete. And I think most people know what the purpose of probiotics are now. We're mostly bacteria uh, more bacteria in our body and on our body than human cells. So these things have a profound impact on our immunity. Um, we know now that certain bacteria in our gut actually influence the way our brain develops and our cognition on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I like to just replenish that on a day-to-day -day basis, make sure I have a good microbiome to fortify that immune system. In fact, 70 to 80% of the immune system is in the gut in something called the gut associated lymphatic tissue. We've got a huge concentration of lymphatic tissue in the gut and our lymph system is a very important part of the immune system. It collects all the garbage and deals with it. So we want to make sure our gut is healthy. We have good probiotics coming in. Um, another caveat to mention here is that we're talking about supplements and what's in my supplement cupboard, but a supplement is supplementing a healthy diet and lifestyle. So by no means would I take all of these constantly um, or instead of eating good food. It all starts with good food. Okay, so multivitamin, probiotic. Um, I even have a, a probiotic for uh, infants, actually, um, because we just had a baby. So we're fortifying his gut because it's been shown to prevent colic, decrease uh, allergies, decrease sensitivities, boost the immune system, um, and a lot of great benefits just from adding a probiotic to the breastfeeding regimen. Uh, so the, the next thing that I have is uh, vitamin D. So I post quite a bit about vitamin D online. It's a super important uh, vitamin and it actually works more like a hormone in the body. Uh, it's actually synthesized from cholesterol. Uh, just like all of our other steroidogenic hormones. And we just, I guess, when we discovered it, we named it a vitamin. But vitamin D is basically a modulator for our immune system and our whole body as well. We've got receptors on every cell of the body for two things, vitamin D and thyroid hormone. So the effects of this are profound. Um, having your blood levels in the optimal level prevents all autoimmune diseases, prevents all cancers, prevents falls uh, in the elderly, um, prevents things like multiple sclerosis, uh, breast cancer, um, obviously it prevents rickets. That's pretty much the only condition that the medical community recognizes as vitamin D preventing. Um, 
So vitamin D is super important to have it in the optimal blood level ranges. If you don't know what that is, we actually have a past episode where I talk all about vitamin D. You can check that out. And uh, if you're trying to get your levels within range, you may also want to work with a functional nutritionist, functional nutrition coach, or functional medicine practitioner. So vitamin D, super important for the, not just the bones, which everyone thinks, oh, vitamin D is just about bones. No, it actually modulates the whole immune system. And it's important for the brain as well. Okay, so the next one on the list is a good... Um, essential fatty acid. So here I've got one by Genestra. They make a beautiful one called Super EFA Liquid. It's a fish oil and it has a really nice portion of EPA and DHA. And you know, DHA is definitely fresh in my mind now have just having a baby. DHA is super important for learning and they actually have measured in the breast milk of, of mothers when a baby is born the DHA that's in the breast milk correlates with how well that baby, uh, their, their learning and their IQ at age eight. At age eight, eight years later. So it's super important for brain development. Um, about 13% of our brain is made up of DHA. 60% of our brain is fat. And then the other portion is EPA, which is a really important anti-inflammatory precursor in our body. So we want to be in a anti-inflammatory favorable state in our body so that inflammation doesn't ensue, get out of control and lead to disease. So we've got EPA and DHA. Question I get often is, do you really need to get it through fish oil? And the answer is sort of yes, sort of no. So the DHA, you can actually get through algae oils these days and actually EPA as well. Um, it's not as concentrated, but you can get them from vegan sources these days, which is pretty cool when it comes to supplement technology. Um, so I prefer fish oil. They molecularly distill their fish oil, so it's like free of all toxins, and that way you're getting a nice pure product and you're getting those good oils for a good price and at a good dosage. So those are my essentials. Just a bonus to that are my digestive bitters which we basically keep on our table at all times, uh, stimulates digestion. I, I call it a digestive tune-up for myself. Bitters work to stimulate digestion because when we taste bitter, our body thinks it's actually a poison. You know, you go out into nature, you eat things that are bitter, you know it's bad, you probably shouldn't eat it. So um, our digestive tract tries to deal with it as quick as possible. And uh, when you just take them at the beginning of a meal or after a meal, they stimulate digestion by the same respect. So that would be my foundational supplements. I'm just gonna check in here online to see if we have any questions. Um, right, so Megan, my wife, um, says, Paige, those are great brands, but Josh and I chose products from all different brands depending on what we need and who has the best um, of that specific supplement. So no one brand fits all. So if I scroll down here, I, say, I see that page says, hello from Michigan. What would you think about supplements only available through a physician, i.e. Metagenics Thorn? So um, you're probably going to be getting much higher quality supplements when you get supplements through a physician like Metagenics and Thorn. We use uh, those companies as well. And in fact, in our clinic, we probably have 10 to 20 different companies that we use based on what we need. I've never found one company that offers everything I need. If anyone ever claims that, you know that they're just trying to sell that one company and I would run far, far away from them. I, I source different ingredients from different companies and in fact, when I don't even find it, I actually formulate it myself. So we actually have our own brand in the clinic because sometimes you can't even find what you need. Um, so it's important to look for high quality brands. When it comes to supplements, you usually pay for what you get. I would run far away from the Walmart brands and the shoppers brands and the generic brands and the Costco brands. You're not getting quality. They're just trying to make the cheapest supplements because they're mass producing them and want to sell a lot of it. So I would stay away from that stuff. Um, question from uh, Nilu. I hope I'm saying your name right. How many billions 
should the probiotics be for adults? And that is a great question. And the answer is, I don't know. In fact, no one really knows the answer to that question. There's a lot of research on there on probiotics, and we do have some studies on dose response relationships. There have been some studies using very high dose probiotics for things like inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's and colitis, up to 3.5 trillion. For a maintenance dose, I usually recommend about 10 to 50 billion colony forming units, CFUs, per day, because that's just a good way to maintain it. I'd also recommend, remember these are supplements, supplementing a good diet, fermented foods like um, sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles when they're made properly. These are all great ways to get loads of probiotics into the body. Um, so we don't actually have research on how many probiotics we need per day. And if you kind of look at the body as a human organism, um, we've got bacteria all over our skin, all over our mucous membranes. We have a hundred trillion bacteria in our gut. It's a huge amount. So when you're taking in the billions, it's actually not that much in relation to what we have going on in the body. It's more of a maintenance. Um, so it really depends. You know, it's just good. When, when, I, when it comes to probiotics, I, I say it's all about the long game. We got to keep the long game in mind. And you got to think about your body and your gut as like a garden. You know, if I was to till the soil, I was going to plant a new garden, I wouldn't rip out all the weeds and plant all the flowers in one day. It's a process of getting the soil ready, mineralizing it, um, getting rid of the weeds, planting your plants one by one adding some nice flowers, adding a variety, weeding on a daily basis. That's what the gut's like. And when we take probiotics, it's like adding some flowers and some fertilizer to those flowers on a daily basis. In fact, the fertilizer is more like prebiotics, which we get from fibers and foods. All right? Okay. Um, more questions here. Um, Vaishali, um, if you want to see anything I've spoken about already, this will be recorded and you can review afterwards. So if there's parts earlier that you missed, you can always go back and review. Uh, vegan probiotics versus dairy-based probiotics. Um, do I have a preference? Well, I have some specific probiotics I use. Oftentimes, I'm not really looking for vegan. I'm using a lot of these uh, therapeutically. Um, sometimes, they're dairy based, but there's not actually dairy in them. So that's a bit of a more in depth discussion. And Francine says, what do you recommend for swollen ankles? That's a great question. And that leads me to my next category, recreational supplements. What do I use recreationally in my cupboard? So the first one to answer your question, Francine, that I'm going to talk about is curcumin. So here I've got some Canprev curcumin. They actually sent me a sample, so that's why I have this one. Uh, we use a different one in our clinic that uh, we like, but they're both fantastic products. And curcumin, here I wanted to show you something. Look at the beautiful color there. That, that dark yellow color. That is the yellow pigment that's in turmeric. So, in it's, and that, that, phytonutrient is called curcumin. And it's one of the most potent anti-inflammatory herbs on the planet. In fact, they're doing quite a bit of research and using it for cancer, and it has been shown to be quite effective in um, addressing cancer cell growth. So curcumin is a potent anti-inflammatory. One of my top recommendations for things like uh, swollen ankles, like uh, you're asking about here, uh, Francine, I use it sometimes when I've done a really heavy workout uh, and I feel like the inflammation or I feel like um, uh, I push myself a little bit too hard. I take this maybe half a day after I've done that workout. One of the things to understand too is inflammation is actually a good thing to a certain extent. So uh, with exercise, we have what's called a hormetic effect and a little bit of damage, a little bit of stress to the body is actually good if you can recover from it. So when we stimulate that inflammation to happen after a workout, 
at a slight level, right? Like I'm not injuring myself full on. We want that process to take place in order for proper muscle recovery and uh, muscle growth to occur. So I don't wanna take the curcumin right after. Um, I usually wait at least four hours to take the curcumin and that can help with muscle recovery and pain after that workout. So that would be one of my recreational supplements. Another recreational supplement that I've been playing with these days, especially because I'm a, a new father and uh, my schedule has been totally thrown out of whack, my sleep has been affected, um, is what I call an adaptogenic complex. So we have something called ADR Restore. Um, there's a lot of comparable products on the market. Another really great one uh, is called Ortho Adapt by uh, the company AOR. And what I have in my little complex here is a number of herbs that are called adaptogens that help the body adapt to stress. Some of the top ones are rhodiola, licorice, uh, ginsengs. Uh, these are really great for helping the body adapt to any type of stress. They work on the HPA axis, the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis, um, which is responsible for the stress, res stress response, fight or flight. And I also have some nutrients in here like vitamin C and B5, which actually get used up at a quicker rate when we're in states of stress. And then I actually have some adrenal glandular, um, which is literally the gland of an animal, the adrenal gland, freeze dried, powdered and put in supplement form, which is very tonifying. In fact, Chinese medicine has been on this for hundreds of years where if you consume the body part of an animal, uh, that you're trying to support, it supports it quite well. And they've actually done studies on this using radioactive uh, isotopes to see where those uh, nutrients go and they find that they actually go right to the organ or the gland, which is really super cool. Um, so, I mean, everything I'm talking about here, we cover in great detail in the therapeutic nutrition and supplements in practice course, which starts in September. This is the first course that's part of the Functional Nutrition Certification Program, which you can learn more about at functionalnutrition.ca, which I'm so excited to start this year with another group of amazing students. And we go into great detail in all of this. But today, we're just doing a quick overview of what's in my cupboard. So, what else do I have on the recreational side? So, I have a supplement here called HM Chelate. This is by Pure Encapsulations. And why do I have this one? Well, one of the things that my wife Megan and I chose to uh, include in our home was an infrared sauna. We found that it would be in a very important part of living the healthy lifestyle. And of course, when I jump into that sauna, I like to optimize the process as much as possible. So I like to Oh, my oh, son. Yeah, we awake the baby. My sauna partner. <laughs> One day I will be back it's in the sauna. It's been a while since. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan. Everyone, this is Megan Talp, the great Megan Talpner, author <laughs> of Undiet and the Undiet Cookbook, and the, the owner and operator of the Academy of Culinary Nutrition and Online Cooking Program. Yes, over at culinarynutrition.com. Which is also starting in September. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for joining me. And the mother of your child. And, the, and now the mother of my child. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, we were just talking about I, recreational I'm supporting recreational supplements. It's your favorite thing. Yeah. So, we were just talking about infrared sauna, how um, I like to use some nutrients that help to chelate those toxins that might be released. Now, since the great Megan Telpner has joined us. Seeing what we got here. Ooh, yeah. I like the ADR Restore. There's some of these I can't take right yeah. now. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what, what I have going on here. <laughs> All my varieties of ginger. Why? What, why? What is that? I'm always nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. It's a little bit true. There's a couple factors here with all this ginger. Um, I'm prone to motion sickness. Like I can get motion sick if I'm on land and someone's in a boat and I'm looking at them in the boat while I'm still on land. I can't go on docks, like floating docks in the summer, car trips, airplane trips. So I always have ginger with me. And then when I was pregnant, um, 
I was, of course, extra nauseous, and so I had all kinds of ginger. Um, this tincture, though, is amazing, and it works so fast. Yeah, so that's a love. super potent one. Yeah, it's super potent, so I love that. But ginger is also great now as a carminative. So for with our baby, if he's ever colicky, which has only happened once, I brewed up a really strong tea of ginger because um, we had it, but you could always take that in a pinch. And it's good for digestion, promoting digestion, good for circulation, um, and really good if you are prone to upset stomach or nausea. Yeah, and look at all the different ones you have. So, yeah. like, supplements in this form, like the capsules, tend to expire a lot quicker yeah. than tinctures, which are alcoholic extractions. So sometimes you can even get the same one in different forms, and it's good to have those different forms. And we... You're, you're taller than me sitting on that chair. Yeah. And I'm standing, yeah. and I just... I'm, we're almost that. level. Yeah. So... Um, we actually jumped to first aid, my first aid cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in recreational. That was just like a little preview. There's a few more I want to discuss there, but we're going to go back to recreational. What's this one? Ooh, Beekeepers Naturals Propolis Spray. The I'll, week I'll take I'm, a few sprays. The week, some of you might know that our baby had to spend some time in the hospital. And the week that I was in the hospital, I pretty much guzzled bottles of that. Um, because the air was so dry and so much airborne stuff, but this is so good for the immune system. Um, so good for the immune system, really good topically with sore throats, uh, really good if you're feeling run down. What else is this good for? Such a pure one and it's delicious and it's kids for kid friendly. Totally too. Cool. Yeah. So we love this. Uh, for yeah. the immune system. That's so a great that's... one too for traveling, like on airplanes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Another recreational one that I love is chlorophyll. So this is just liquid chlorophyll. And there was actually some research done that showed oh, that's a good, when you good take study. chlorophyll, I'm taking all my supplements right it now. improves the efficiency of your mitochondria to pump out ATP when you're exposed to sunlight. So we once thought that sunlight um, only created food in plants called photosynthesis. But now we know that it actually has an effect on our body and some other effects that we know the sun has is it increases nitric oxide in the bloodstream, which increases vasodilation. So they found in places where people are exposed more to the sun, they have lower rates of heart disease. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since you've claimed Your mouth is green now. Did you just take some? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking everything you put yeah, in front yeah, of me yeah. right now. Um, but you claim that I'm a breathitarian because I don't need to eat that much food. True. But really, maybe I've just been living on sunshine. Maybe. Like water you could food. live on sunshine. So that's another recreational. Um, another recre... Well, actually, that's going to go over there. Another recreational one is just magnesium. So again, I got a sample from Can Prep, so that's why I have this one, but it's a beautiful magnesium. It's magnesium glycinate, which is the most absorbable form of magnesium. Now I Ooh, saw here that I got a, <laughs> I saw here that I got a question from uh, Yvonne. Yvonne uh, Crutchfield, thank you for your question. You asked if I ever test my supplements with kinesiology. And um, that's a great question. And is that that like Muscle testing? Yeah, it's like muscle testing. Um, Magnesium is a perfect example because there's been really great research um, on looking at blood levels of magnesium after a magnesium glycinate is taken versus a magnesium oxide versus a magnesium citrate. And what they found is that magnesium glycinate and bisglycinate, very similar, is much higher absorbed. So that's the type of research that I like to look at. Uh, kinesiology is a little bit more um, of an energy-based medicine. I don't throw it out as something that's not really valid, but I just don't understand it as much. I don't use it, so it's not what I resort to when I'm looking at supplements. I'm looking to uh, the scientific research on that matter to best support my decisions. So recreational was the magnesium. Um, great for relaxing the bowels, great for relaxing the mind, and also when you work out uh, pretty hard, you also need a little bit more magnesium. This was also great when I was pregnant, or if you, like Josh said, like when you're working out, pregnancy is the ultimate, and when your body's changing or you're building muscle or 
things are expanding or stretching. Um, it's really good to help reduce pain. And I also, is my mouth still green? No, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. And you can also get um, a magnesium oil spray if you ever want Oh yeah, we use that topically as well. That's in our first aid cupboard as well. Yeah. Um, can you tell them a little bit about this one? This is liver. <laughs> liver. <laughs> Uh, and this is interesting because uh, during pregnancy, um, there's a lot of conflicting information about vitamin A, where they'll tell you, doctors will often say, like, don't take any supplements that have high amounts of vitamin A. Um, but then if you look at research, there's in the book Nourishing Traditions for a Mother and Baby, I think they talk about how there's actually research shows benefits of vitamin A. Liver is really high in vitamin A, mm. um, so I wasn't while I was pregnant wasn't taking vitamin A supplements full on, and I couldn't stomach eating liver, so I was taking the liver supplement to get the vitamin A in a balanced sort of food based dose, as right. to a therapeutic dose. Right. Um, now that I'm you know can eat more things, I have been eating liver because it's so nutritive and really good for re restoration, and actually. Um, 10 years ago when I worked at the resort and yeah. I was living off a buffet, yeah. a buffet for three months yeah. and like literally eating dessert after every meal. And I came back and I felt so depleted and a nutritionist had, had advised me to eat liver. So I made this liver and if any of you are grossed out by organ meats, maybe you shouldn't eat meat at all because it's good to eat all the parts if you're going to consume them. But um, I was a little bit grossed out. I did it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but what was interesting about these like super nutrient dense foods, like a liver, whether you agree or not, all all nutrient dense foods sort of fall into this category that you eat it until you don't need it mm. anymore. And so I made it, and I ate like a whole jar. This was ten years ago, and then like couldn't look at it for ten years. Wow! Like it was just like I got my fill, couldn't eat it, and then after having the baby. I like had an appetite for it again because mm -hmm. I guess I needed to replenish so mm -hmm. many things. Reminds me of a study, Megan. Oh, <laughs> tell <laughs> that, me you know it's study. interesting because your body knows what it needs most of the time, right? Like you just got to listen to it. You got to get that communication going. And there was a fascinating study carried out in the 1930s. Uh, I'll just give you the quickie. If you want the details, you can go to my website, joshcatalis.com go to the blog and type in blank palette and you'll find the article. But basically, they took kids that were in an orphanage. I think they were aged four to seven, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, some of them had rickets, some of them were ill, some of them were okay. And what they did was they chose uh, about 30, you know, just between 30 and 40 foods to, to feed them, covering all the whole gamut of nutrients. And they put six bowls in front of them every meal and they had to choose which bowls to eat. They were, the, their, their caregivers were told not to feed them anything, not to suggest anything. By the end of the study, which was a number of years, uh, the kids were in impeccable health. Impeccable. Yeah. So the body knows sometimes what it needs. Uh, a very simple example, which everyone has experienced at some point, is thirst. Mm. Right? When you're thirsty, you need water, and then you go have water. It's the same for other nutrients, it's just not as obvious sometimes. Oh, I just thought that it, uh, Yvonne is joining us for the c &E program this fall. Oh, nice. Way to go. And I see Alina. Hello, Alina. And I see Shale. Hello, Shale. Shale! <laughs> Shale's my longtime friend. Glad to see you online. So, um, Jolie uh, asks, Josh, which supplements should I give my son? He wakes up sneezing. I feel so bad for him. Uh, has some sort of allergy. Maybe to the fibers in the pillows. Where do I start? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, so first of all, we don't really give any specific advice here because I don't know your son. I need to do a full history. But just generally speaking, I think you know the first part of the answer. You're betting. And we often do, especially parents. They have that intuitive factor. Um, speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> see if he, if he quiets down. Okay, we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah. You want to start looking at the environment if you think it's some sort of allergy. Megan and I ran a course called Healthy at Home this year, um, where we went through every home, every room in a home. Someone's calling. But me. hopefully we can see you again. <laughs> where we went through every room in a home uh, to talk about where toxins might be lurking and how to clean those out. So I would start to do an inventory of that room, not just the room, 
look at your furnace, look at the filters in your furnace, look at the different uh, items you use in the home, look at the cleaners that you use in the home. Um, we know that when there's environmental pollutants, there's a much higher risk for children to have things like asthma, allergies, sneezing, um, upper respiratory tract infections. So it's something you sort of have to begin on an investigative process and start to peel the layers of the onion and try to, what I call, drain the barrel, the toxic barrel that might be in that person's environment. After you've done that, then you can go on and maybe look into uh, possible food sensitivities, which can sometimes cross-react with other things like dust mites. Um, and then maybe look at some supplementation while working with a practitioner on that. There's a fantastic book out there on allergies by Leo Galland, which you can look up, Leo Galland. And it does go through a lot of what I spoke about and it, it'll give you a deep dive into that information. So uh, thank you so much for your question. Um, Alina, hey Alina, um, hey to you too. And... He told me he'd be quiet if I brought him down. Oh, so this is... This is Finley Hirsch, his first debut on, on, on any uh, Facebook live stream. Yeah, he's, he's camera shy right now. And he's just, he's just chilling right now, so we chilling have no idea what's going to happen. But we were already talking about uh, vitamin D. Whoops. We were already talking about vitamin D earlier as a foundational yeah. supplement daily. And what we know is that if mother That's me. has enough vitamin D in her body, optimal levels, she can actually supply sufficient amounts of vitamin D in the breast milk, okay? Yeah. Um, also, if needed, you supplement the child, but uh, the work from Vitamin D Council, they've done some really great uh, research and amalgamation of information. You can check that out. They have some really good stuff on pregnancy, lactation, and vitamin D. Yes, and I was also, while I was pregnant, was taking that one, which is a vitamin D and vitamin K combo, because vitamin K helps with blood clotting, and is a preventative for things like postpartum hemorrhage. Absolutely. Like super fast healing after, yeah. after, after, the, after the delivery. So yeah, one of the things that's uh, pretty standard uh, on births in developed countries is that they give an injection of vitamin K right after the baby is born. And that is because uh, the birthing process is quite traumatic to the baby and can cause hemorrhaging and bleeding even in the brain. Uh, and about one in, a, I think about 10,000 Babies will suffer um, bleeding that could be life-threatening, so they do do that vitamin K injection. But if mother is loaded up on vitamin K, um, it can help to basically inoculate the baby with vitamin K and make sure that they have enough vitamin K so that they can have proper clotting. Kind of cool. Um... Okay, um, Karen says, I was told holy basil is great for stress. Just wondered your thoughts. Yeah, holy basil is amazing. So we talked about... Remember that time you accidentally put it in a smoothie? Yeah, so <laughs> we talked about ADR Restore and yeah. ADR Restore has adaptogens in it. Holy basil is just another adaptogen and different adaptogens have different specialties in the body. So um, holy basil is really great for the brain and the mind. So is lion's mane. Rhodiola is really great for energy. The ginsengs are great for energy. Licorice is good for increasing blood pressure. Um, so they all have sort of their own little specialty. Um, Alexander... There's a little arm. Look at this little arm. <laughs> <laughs> you love those limbs. We can't get over it, can we? No. So Alexandria asks, uh, where do you buy the tinctures and herb? Uh, supplement treatments all over. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier in the live stream, the selection I have here is just sort of what I've gathered over the years. There, some are free samples, some are supplement companies I'm trying, some um, are just regular things I'm taking, and some are even formulations that I've made because I haven't been able to find them anywhere else. Um, and a question from Vaishali asks, where's the ginger tincture from? That's from St. Francis Herb Farm. They make a amazing ginger tincture, which is super potent, and we love that one. Um, okay. Question from Chris Brown uh, is, isn't transdermal magnesium the best? That's a fabulous question. Uh, and uh, for all the companies 
Actually, I did a search on PubMed, uh, which is a list of all the different scientific studies out there, and I haven't found one scientific study that actually shows that transdermal magnesium increases blood levels of magnesium. Now, I have a lot of... I might be back. Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of people uh, that have said that they use topical magnesium and it relaxes muscles, and I think it's quite effective superficially to help relax muscles. Um, and I use it myself, but if we want to raise blood levels of magnesium, we need a much, much higher dose and have to take it internally. Um, okay, someone asked what brand of chlorophyll is it? That was uh, Genestra, which is, is a nice one. I'm back. And another question is, is it best to take magnesium at night? You can take it any time of day. It really depends on why you're taking it and what you want the function to be. It's great to take it at night if you want it as a bit of a relax and as a sleep aid. It's good to take it at night to help with, with morning pooping. Um, but if you're taking it for muscle recovery, you might want to take it just before or just after strong workouts. Yeah. So it really depends on the purpose. The purpose. The purpose. Yeah, so sometimes you have one supplement, you might use it in different ways. Okay, we're going to move on to sort of my final category. We started with foundational. We went to recreational, and now we're going to emergency. Do you cover this kind of stuff in your, your supplements course? I do cover this all in my supplement course, which is mm -hmm. Therapeutic Nutrition and Supplements in Practice. We are starting September 7th. Ooh, that's soon. 2017. Ooh, that's fun. this year. And it's the kitchen sink of supplements. We talk about... leave ends. Oh, yeah. We talk about dosages, forms of supplements, maintenance dose, therapeutic dose, um, how to choose the best brands. We talk about vitamins, minerals, fats, herbs, mushrooms, bee medicine, food for healing. It's a great course. We cover it all. I call it the kitchen sink. And that's actually the first course in our full functional nutrition yeah. certification and program. And it's such important information for one, for people who take supplements so that you actually know what you're taking when you walk into a health food store, but it's not covered to my knowledge, in any holistic, integrative, or natural nutrition program. We don't cover supplements in the culinary program either. No. So it's really important as a practitioner or as a supplement taker. Do you know what the top selling multivitamin is? Centrum? Yeah, Centrum is the top selling multivitamin. It is probably doing more harm than good. It absolutely is. To most people. I've actually written a blog on it, Centrum. Um, chemical cocktail or health product, you can check that out. And I've broken down every single ingredient in Centrum and what I think about it. Yeah. There's tin in Centrum. Mm. Are you deficient in tin, Megan? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it's not an essential I mineral. I hope I don't have a we lot really, of tin. We really don't need tin. It's also got like corn and, and binder. I don't even think people digest it, which no. probably does them better. I just poop them right out yeah. as little little centrum pellets. pellets. Okay, moving okay. on. So moving on to our emergency medicine cabinet. So we already spoke about Ginger. the gingers. Um, just on, on a similar topic, Love that one. I actually formulated something for Megan. Which is, which is vitamin B6. Pyridoxal 5 phosphate, the active phosphorylated form, most absorbable, and ginger together. Yeah. Because those have been shown to greatly reduce morning sickness um, and nausea during pregnancy. Yeah, and I noticed a huge difference on like the one or two days I forgot to take it. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't barf my entire pregnancy. And I know that it can differ for different people and it can be extreme cases, but prevention. Um, can go a long way and and topping up on those nutrients can be really really effective and I recently shared a story and there's also um, I wrote a blog post on 40 natural solutions to pregnancy symptoms but the most popular prescribed drug for morning sickness um, there was a study in the Toronto Star so it's not even like alternative our, our alternative media but mm -hmm. you know mainstream media that's saying the results were fudged and that this drug showed to be no more effective than vitamin B6 on its own. So I have, I have the reference in my blog post on, on pregnancy symptoms. So 
sometimes it's better to go with a, a natural supplement than totally. going to a pharmaceutical whenever possible. Totally. So that's the ginger category. Um, something I always like to have for an emergency Sleep. is right <laughs> something I always like to have for an emergency is some sort of like um, immune booster for like a cold or a flu coming on. You know, the one of the best ways that natural supplements work in those situations is you got to take them right when you feel a little bit run down. You don't wait. You get a little scratchy throat, start pounding the vitamin C, start pounding the reishi, start pounding the whatever it is that you have in the cupboard. So again, I was given this sample by CanPrev, it's called Cold Pro. It's got a whole bunch of great herbs in there. Echinacea is one of them. Can you, I think we have an echinacea in there actually. Can you just go into our medicine cabinet and grab that? Echinacea is something I think everyone should have on hand. It's in a box, it's a tincture. Yeah. Thanks for the clue. There's a lot in there. Yeah. So our good friend, uh, Julie Daniluk, who, who actually does some work with A. Vogel, gave us a, a sample of echinophorce, uh, which is echinacea. And that's, yeah, something I think everyone should have in their medicine cabinet because echinacea has been around forever. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most powerful immune boosters in the herbal world. It should not be underestimated at all. So we always like to have a little echinacea in there. We start taking it at high dosages. It's also great for bites, infections, um, everything. Next one is activated charcoal. So when do we when do we really make sure this is on hand? That when we're traveling. When we're traveling, yeah. So when we go to more, I guess, exotic type places where the food or the water might not be optimal, we take activated charcoal because activated charcoal um, soaks up everything. It uses yeah. um, a, a process called adsorption. We've, AD. AD. We've heard of absorption. This is adsorption where it has a slight chemical charge, or sorry, slight electrical charge, and it'll actually bind up to any of those toxins and make sure you don't absorb them into the bloodstream and help you eliminate them so they don't make you feel sick. So it's really good when you have food poisoning as well. Exactly. But know that your poo will be black. But don't worry, it's not internal bleeding. It's the charcoal. True. And is, is charcoal good for anything else other than that? Uh, well, it's used for detox stuff all the time now. Like It's gotten very trendy totally, for totally. like facials and toothpastes. Um, I'm working on, in my, by working on, I mean in my brain, because I don't have time to do anything right now, but this <laughs> ice cream recipe, I want to make this black licorice ice cream and use activated charcoal to turn it black, and there's an ice cream place in Toronto that just opened serving black ice cream. It's been made black by activated charcoal. Cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah, so this... This doesn't really, you're this, just saying that. <laughs> you hate black licorice, and activated charcoal and ice cream sounds disgusting. Yeah. But I'm working on It'll something. look pretty cool, probably. So the activated charcoal can actually even make its way into the recreational side if I'm doing like a detox or something. Yeah. But we'll keep it in the emergency side. Um, so on the... This is semi-emergency. I think this is where I say goodbye. Okay. Well, maybe we'll see you back. But um, this is just a straight-up zinc supplement. And the reason why I have this over here is because we did some micronutrient testing with Megan, and we found that she was low on zinc, she was borderline low, so we were upping her in levels. Another thing we found, we did some hormone testing on Megan, and she, we found that she had a genetic mutation for estrogen detoxification. Uh, we followed up with some hormone testing and found that there was one type of estrogen that was a little bit high. So we got uh, an estrogen detoxification supplement to help speed up that <laughs> detoxification process uh, to give her a little boost. So this isn't forever, this is just to supplement the diet. In fact, a lot of the nutrients in here are in things like cruciferous vegetables. So once we top up the body, once we help those detoxification pathways catch up, we can just revert back to food to keep that going. Yeah, I thought it was so cool. We mm. talked about this in last year's conference interview yeah. for the Culinary Nutrition Conference about how amazing it is with the functional medicine testing you can do. Yeah. That you can... You He's can, asleep. He's asleep again? Pretty much. Oh, 
I don't know. <laughs> but uh, with the functional medicine testing, you can do how you can customize therapeutic programs and protocols to be like hugely preventative against what are commonly considered degenerative diseases or genetic conditions because we know how to support any genetic mutation. For sure. Like we go to the doctor and we get blood tests and testing done. That's looking for end stage diseases. But the beautiful part about functional nutrition, functional medical testing, um, is that it looks at the function of the body, not looking for disease or dysfunction of the body. It looks for nutrient de deficiencies, hormone imbalances, gut imbalances. Um, this is something we cover and discuss in the functional nutrition certification program. If you want to learn more about that, uh, but yeah, and it could catch things years before they actually become a problem. I think Maeve joined us. Maeve? Maeve there? Huh? Hi, Maeve. <laughs> she came for the baby show. She totally came for the baby show. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you stay. So the final part, and then I'm going to attend to some more of the questions, is uh, the final thing is some digestive aids. Uh, which I like to use sort of first aidy if I eat too much, if I feel a little gurgly in the stomach or what whatnot. So I've got some stomach ac or, or betaine HCL, which is an acidic stop supplement for the for the, for digestion. We want the stomach to be very acidic, and I've got a digestive a very high potency digestive enzyme, which helps to break down the food. Sometimes necessary, sometimes helpful. Um, and sometimes our guests appreciate it when we serve a nice meal. So there you have it. We talked about some foundationals. We talked about recreationals. We talked about first aid supplements. Um, and if you want to learn a ton more on supplements, how to use them most appropriately for yourself, your family, your clients, if you're a practitioner, do you just get clocked in the face? <laughs> <laughs> you can join me for my Therapeutic Nutrition and Supplements and Practice course, which starts September 7th. Check that out on my website by going to our Learn tab. The link is also in the description of this Facebook Live. You can check that out. So let's um, see if we have any questions. So uh, Deb Young says, so nice to see you. Nice to see you too online, Deb. Uh, can you take charcoal daily for any length of time? or for a length of time? Uh, the answer is no. I would not recommend that you take activated charcoal for any length of time. It's more of a first aid supplement. And why is that? It's because it's a very powerful binder. So if you are taking it regularly, you're actually gonna bind up some of the nutrients that you consume in your food, making them not available for absorption and losing the benefits of all the good food that I'm sure you eat, Deb. So you want to make sure that um, you're only taking that as needed. Okay, this one's from Andrea. Thanks for joining us, Andrea. Uh, how long do you normally give a supplement to determine whether it is effective or not? Um, that's a great question. And whoops, you're about to run out of juice. When I'm working with clients, it's all about reviewing their symptomatology. So we actually have um, some time-tested processes. I've been in practice for over 10 years um, where we reevaluate, we re-examine, we connect with the client on a regular basis to see if they still need that supplement based on their symptomatology and sometimes functional lab tests. And this is something we get into in great detail in the functional nutrition certification program. If you're a practitioner, Andrea, I'm not sure if you are, um, I actually share my whole process on how I put protocols together, how I work with clients, and how we reevaluate as time goes on. Um, you go on to say, I've never felt a difference taking high quality probiotics, turmeric, cod liver oil, not sure whether it is worth or to keep taking them. Um, are there supplements you found that don't work for you? You know, you bring up a really interesting point, and I actually have a blog on supplements. Um, I think it was the five myths of supplements or something like that. But um, a lot of people do say they take supplements, they don't feel anything. And part of I don't usually. Yeah, you don't usually. And part of that is because they work on a very subtle level. 
when we take a drug, most people have the experience of taking a painkiller. You know, you have a headache, you take a Tylenol or an aspirin or an Advil or something, the pain goes away. Mm -hmm. But when we're working with building health, when we're working with preventative medicine and using these things ongoing, no news is good news. We're actually preventing a lot of problems. So we were speaking about vitamin D earlier, and we know that when your blood levels are in the optimal level for vitamin D, you prevent cancers, you prevent autoimmune diseases, you prevent fractures in elderly, and you'd only know if you were going to have that if you were diagnosed with cancer, autoimmune disease, right. or fracture. So you don't know. So no news is good news when it comes to preventative health. Um, so sometimes we don't feel it. Um, and, and you need to work maybe with a good healthcare practitioner so they can look at some objective information, maybe testing, um, just to see if what you're taking is doing what it should be doing. There's also something about your constitution, which I have a really strong constitution, which means I typically don't feel when things are going wrong until it's like so bad. Like I don't feel the gradual shifts. Whereas Josh, you have a weaker constitution that you feel everything way more, you're way right. more sensitive or, or feel things more subtly than I do. Do you, have you ever felt the effects of adaptogens? No. Yeah, so that's a Although perfect example. Although sometimes when you give me adaptogens, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. That means I can work more and do more. You're just not in tune to it. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't use them, I guess, the way you should, which is like you do the same amount but just respond better. But yeah, so adaptogens, I would say that that's one of the supplements where you yeah. actually feel an effect. Yeah. Um, fish oil, which tons of people take now, is a supplement you might not feel an effect for. Because what it is, is it's helping to balance the body and keep it in an anti-inflammatory state yeah. so that if you get knocked in the head or if you get in an accident or bang up your arm or leg or something, that inflammation doesn't happen forever or ongoing and it heals quicker, right? So sometimes we don't feel the effects and it doesn't mean that it's not working. It just might not mean that you're not necessarily able to objectively measure the effect of that supplement. Another foundational one I spoke about was the probiotic. Again, no news is good news. Oh, if, I know it's a difference you can, with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I poop better. Yeah, so you poop better. That's a, that's a good report. Um, but a lot of people, I don't really notice much. I poop good on it. <laughs> I poop good off it. Um, but I know it's helping to fortify my immune, immune system and keep me healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great question. Your low battery is making me a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, we're going to have to wrap this up soon. I have no idea where my phone battery is and it's going to going to die soon. So maybe I'll take two or three more questions. Um, question from Valerie, is it safe to drink aloe vera juice daily? I would say absolutely. That's a pretty powerful superfood right there. Um, I have a comment on that one. Kimberly says, where can I get that morning sickness supplement? Um, so... The morning sickness supplement which we were talking about was just a combination of ginger and vitamin B6. So you can get those supplements Get separately. them separately. Take them. With your prenatal. Yeah. And it's basically the exact same thing. It's just I had the ability to formulate it and be fancy and put it in a capsule all in yeah. one. I wanted to say something with the aloe vera juice. Um, the stuff you buy in the bottle... Uh, it's not the most potent. Like Josh was saying, it's super potent, but the stuff you buy in the bottle, I can't think of the brand, but it's like, it's really diluted and deodorized and all kinds of stuff. Cause you know, when you pull off an aloe leaf, it smells like armpit. And, <laughs> and I have a whole blog post about aloe and the healing powers of aloe. So I don't know, like there's nothing wrong with drinking those big bottles. Um, and a lot of, of naturopaths and nutritionists will recommend it for like IBS and inflammatory bowel disease. But having just a little bit of the gel from an aloe plant and letting it soak in a jar of water and drinking that water, in my opinion, has way more potency than those big bottles. And it's cheaper. Thank you for your opinion. Yeah, that's my opinion. Good two cents. Yeah. Um, uh, Karen says, how much, uh, is asking how much, how do you know how much magnesium you need? So there's a couple ways. Mm. One of the best ways is something called bowel tolerance. And this works actually for magnesium and vitamin C as well. And basically you take more and more and more of it until you have poopy pants. And when well, you, ideally not poopy pants. No, ideally you get to the bathroom before that I happens. call it rapid evacuation. <laughs> that sounds like a 
band name from the it could, 90s you know, if, if we had a band, we could be Rapid yeah. Evacuation. <laughs> We'd have a poo emoji in our logo. Yeah, and a ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> maybe a combo. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, so... I just pictured a ukulele where, like, the bottom part is actually, like, the poo emoji with the <laughs> yeah. stuff. I want to get a custom-made ukulele. That's, okay, I know someone. That I know can someone do that. Can okay, do that. cool. So, um, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. So, bowel tolerance. You basically take it until you have a loose bowel movement, and then you know your body can't absorb anymore, and it's trying to get rid of it. So, you can do that with magnesium. You can do that with vitamin C. Good question. Let's take two more questions. Um, Jolie says uh, Moringa is excellent for lactation as well. Interesting. I've been taking fenugreek and blessed thistle, and I've been taking so much fenugreek that I feel like Finley, our son, is going to be like walking by like a curry or an Indian restaurant one day and be like, oh, it smells like my early days with my mom because this fenugreek, which is a common spice in Indian cooking, is just like radiating out of me. What do I call you? I don't know if it's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The spice cupboard or something yeah. like that? Yeah. You're, yeah. You're the spice cupboard. So um, a couple co uh, other questions here. What are my thoughts? Uh, Cohen Daniel says, what are my thoughts on Sam E.? Ooh. Esadenazil methionine. Good question. So we got a smarty pants on our uh -huh. hands. Sam E is an important um, methyl donor in mm -hmm. the body. If you don't know what that means, I'm not going to explain it right now. <laughs> but you explain those kinds of things in your course. <laughs> yes, we go through that in great detail in my course. And actually, uh, Sam E has been used uh, extensively for people with depression. Mm -hmm. And it's been put up against five, eight, or sorry, it's been put up against. Uh, SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Prozac, and in pretty much all the research that's been done, it either works just as good or, or better, better without the crazy scary side effects of SSRIs. of SSRIs. And the top side effects of SSRIs are actually digestive upset, which is enough to make anyone depressed. It's true. Well, there's the, the gut brain access. That, Absolutely. That can so Sammy, yeah, cycle. Sammy is a, is a very powerful methyl donor. And also some people don't methylate so well, so it could be used in that effect as well. And it's also been shown to help with joint pain as well. So sometimes you see on, on a container or a bottle of Sammy, it says, uh, sometimes it says for joint health. And then sometimes it says for mood. And you're like, what? the hell's going on here they're two completely different things and that's because these nutrients work on different biochemical pathways in the body and provide benefits in different pathways so uh, I think it's great if you used in the in the right way um, Michael asks these supplements work for muscle gain um, that's not my brother Michael no 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 <laughs> my brother's name is Michael and he's and a triathlete my answer would be mm, that wasn't really the focus here. Um, one of my recreational ones I spoke about was curcumin, uh, sorry, was curcumin, which helps with recovery, which helps with muscle recovery, so it could help with muscle gain, potentially. Okay, any other questions coming through? Um... Someone says you should go to bed. Yeah, we should. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I was actually thinking it's time for me to have a snack. Well, thank you, Lynn, for making mm -hmm. that recommendation, and we will take it literally. Mm -hmm. So she always said I, I should go to bed. You can you can stay. I should keep I should working. keep keep on working for the family. So, Lynn, I'm going up north. We're going up north shortly. Headstand's gonna happen. Headstand on the support. Yeah. You yeah. do one every year. I do one every year, and I'm waiting for Lynn. Lynn's going to do one soon, too. You're, you're lucky on the timing of the baby. I know. It would have been really hard to do when nine months pregnant. <laughs> hard, but not impossible. Not, nothing's impossible. Maybe slightly dangerous. I did a headstand, I think, six and a half months pregnant was my last one. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. I went so, off topic. Off topic is where I like to go sometimes. So... Thank you so much, everyone. 
for joining me here on This Week in the Clinic, but I'm not actually in the clinic, I'm actually in my kitchen, if you didn't figure that one out <laughs> this week. Um, we have 20 other episodes that we've done before this on all sorts of topics, thyroid health, other supplement topics. Um, I had very, very special guests on my show on previous episodes. One of them was Megan Talpiner. Yeah, in Our, a very different state. In a very different state. We actually did one on pregnancy yeah. when you're pregnant. We did one, another one on your Crohn's disease and oh, how yeah, you feel that. That was, that. That was super powerful episode. I interviewed a couple of my good friends, Julie Danilak, um, who came up with a book on detoxification, Joy McCarthy. Um, we did, I did episodes on detoxification. I did one on answering your questions. Wait, but what about your course? What about it? When does it start again? It starts uh, September 7th. So, <laughs> um, I think there's a link in the video description. There's a link in the video to ther our therapeutic nutrition and supplements and practice course where I dive into all the supplement stuff in great, great detail. So if you liked the little hors d'oeuvre that you had here today <laughs> and you liked the taste of it, of what I cooked up, you can get the full course. So many puns. Starting in September, where actually the course isn't just about supplements. It's actually just as much about food and how to and use food for it. healing. Did you know that two cloves of gar garlic can decrease blood pressure better than almost any other blood pressure drug out there? Yes, I think you share that nugget in our healing foods course as part of the Culinary Nutrition Expert Program. Oh yeah. Did you know that a tablespoon of flaxseed per day can balance out estrogen? estrogen? And it's also a galactagogue, so it can increase milk production. And it's a, give, give me a food fact. A food fact? Yeah, like a healing food. Oh, you're putting any, me on the Any spot. healing food. Oh, think you of, do that to think, me. think about it for a moment. A healing food fact. Well, how about kimchi? How about it? What kimchi is a fermented food, and we do lactic acid fermentation, so without air anaerobic and it creates a uh, live it's a micro it creates probiotic benefit yeah. live, live bacteria that help to re-inoculate the gut with the good bacteria that boosts immune function brings down inflammation promotes good digestion you can make it yourself um, and if you're using cabbage for it which most people do cabbage is also incredibly high in vitamin c so it has that immune benefit too if you're using chili peppers in it you've got that circulation benefit so uh, kimchi is a really awesome therapeutic food, and I actually show you how to make it in the Culinary Nutrition Expert Program. Oh yeah! Boom! At culinarynutrition.com. Oh! Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> what was the key ingredient, the the main flavor in your smoothie this morning that I made for you? Oh my goodness! I know it was almost <laughs> ten. Strawberries. So, there you go. Strawberry today. Josh has been making me smoothies every single morning because I wake up and I'm nursing right away, and I get I wake up so hungry. Yeah, and strawberries are loaded with a phytonutrient called elagic acid, elagic acid, which is a powerful detoxifier in the liver, and also it was if also you, the topic of one of Josh's very first YouTube videos, which is always fun to go you back can, and if watch. If you can find that. And about a quarter cup of berries, specifically blueberries a day, decreases mental decline by 10 years. Ooh. So this is powerful information. This is prevention at its best. And again, if you want to dive deep into this, join me for my course, uh, September 7th, um, Therapeutic Nutrition and Supplements in Practice. It happens once a year, and it's by far my most popular course for good reason. And it's the first course as part of my functional nutrition certification program, which is all of my courses amalgamated plus a couple workshops. And again, you can find more information about that at functionalnutrition.ca. Anything else you want to say, Megan? Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Thanks yeah. for letting Mr. Finn come and join when he Absolutely. was being so disruptive. He's always welcome. And thank <laughs> you all so much for joining. If you think this is valuable information for someone else, please share it. I appreciate your thumbs up. I appreciate your hearts. And most of all, I appreciate you taking the time to join me this evening. Bye. Bye. Do you want to go around I'll and go around. press the finish? <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night.